What is going on, everybody? Brent Abel here, goldballhunting.com. That dude over there. Yeah, man, the great Jeff Jacklich. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we get another episode of the Goldball Hunting Podcast. Today's episode number like a million and 13, I think, or a million and a hundred. Yeah, something like at that. least. Boy, up there. I might be under underestimating that number. Over, under a little bit, you know. Yeah, give or, give or take a couple hundred thousand. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, no. Uh, every day, every day, guys, we're out here trying to help you guys out with your tennis game. What a concept on a daily basis, right? And uh, so, guys, we got another episode of the podcast today that uh, you're going to want to listen to the very end because, uh, and Jeff doesn't even know what we're talking about today, which I love kind of doing this. He's just like, he's just like, uh, just, you know, I'm so confident with whatever you're going to say, Brent. It doesn't matter. I don't need to be prepared. So, Guys, um, hang in there with us because um, this is an important part of your shot choice. Whew, God, I, could, I could have messed that word up really. Shot choice. <laughs> so the big question is this. How are tennis players like us who never played on the tour, weren't incredible juniors, or maybe got a late start to the game, how do we consistently compete at our highest skill level without having to grind through endless hours of encore practice time and still be in the hunt for the victory match after match? That is the question, and Gold Ball Hunting gives you the answers by helping you eliminate your skill level range so that you build a strong foundation of confidence. My name is Jeff Jacklich, and along with Brent Abel, my partner, welcome to Gold Ball Hunting. <laughs> what did you take this morning? <laughs> I didn't take anything. I Took my normal standard nutritional supplements that I take every day um, from from the fine folks over at uh, they now call themselves OxyFresh, which to me sounds like an industrial cleaner, but uh, yeah. they are the former Life Shots folks, and um, I've loved their products from day one, just because they work. <laughs> I don't know. They, I, I feel pretty good. Maybe you know. So anyway, I, I, I take I take several of them. Well, several. I take four. I take well, no, I take three of their supplements and make four products. Um, but it's a it's a vitamin nutritional thing. And then they have something called Mind M A I M I N D M I N D. You can see sometimes it doesn't work every day. Um, yeah. Tell me more, Brent. <laughs> So anyway, it's very good. It's very good stuff. Um, anyway, but you and I are about to try something new, a new, a new product um, from uh, a couple of yours, some friends of yours. Yep. And we're not going to divulge the name or anything until we actually dive into it for a month. We're going to test it and see, um, and see how it goes. Yep. I think we're starting yep. in about a week or so. Something, something like yeah, that. I think, uh, yeah, it's supposed to show up uh, this coming Saturday. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think it's the That's delivery. Right. I'm looking forward yeah. to it. Um, yeah. Uh, I think the whole concept behind it, which is not a vitamin, not a nutritional supplement, but something, no. something different. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Looking forward to it. An activator. An activator. Ooh. Well, we'll let you hang on that one for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, on that one. <laughs> um, so, Jeff, uh, we, we, we keep talking about the five pillars. Or not, we don't yep. keep. We're just sort of been just starting talking about the five pillars. Right. Uh, pillar number one being less technique. Not more technique, less technique. What's the big deal with Jimmy, Jimmy Parker? What's the big deal with Mark Vines? Well, yeah. It's about efficient, sustainable technique, which actually means take stuff away that you just don't need. And the stuff you don't need is the, are the things that make you inconsistent as a shot maker. So pillar number one is less technique. Uh, pillar number two is what we're going to actually talk about today. So I'm going to come back to pillar number two. Uh, number three is mental, right? We've got to have the right brainstem activity going on. Uh, right before, during, and after the matches. Uh, the fourth one is, is physical, is kind of, you know, do you need to drop 20? I don't know, maybe you do. 
You know, you need to stop lifting weights every day and running five miles every day. Maybe you do. Maybe that's not the best thing for your tennis game. <clears throat> right. I don't know. Uh, the fifth thing, and, and the fifth thing is we, we've been calling it experience, but I think we need to add an S and make it plural. Meaning experiences. You need to have more experiences on the tennis court with real matches. And, you know, the kind of one of the buzzwords we hear in pro sports is, oh, well, I think this guy's going to win because, or he won because he's got more experience. Okay, well, I think we need to add experiences. He's had more times in the court. He or she has had more times in the court to experience different things. So that's, right. just, that's just me. I'm just going with a plural on experiences. Let's back up. Let's, I don't know what I took this morning. It was something, it was something good though. I went out and I played this morning with my buddy Owen. And like after, you know, and we do this thing where I, you know, we, we start off, one of us starts serving for maybe like 12 or 15 minutes. So we just go do sad, do sad. We just rotate back and forth. We don't keep score. But I kept keeping score after a while because I started off serving today, Jeff. I don't think I lost a point until like point number 21 or something. Ouch. <laughs> And Owens finally, after, you know, after like eight or nine points is going, you know, what did you take this morning, Brent? <laughs> so I just had it going. You know, you know, I worked on this morning, uh, Jeff, was seeing how relaxed I could keep my, my hand on the racket handle mm -hmm. without it literally kind of, you know, falling out yeah. of my, of my hand. And what I, you know, I've sort of always known this, but I've never really spent enough time, you know, cementing it right to where I, I just, I'm so aware of it for like 30 days because what happens to me when I'm, when I'm really relaxed on the, on, on the grip is that I make better shot choices. I make way better shot choices. It seems like I have less to think about. Anytime there's a little grippy tension in there, you know, it's like, oh, God, you know, well, the laundry list of shot choices is, well, here, 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 here. And then you get grippier and grippier and tighter and tighter because you're not making a choice. You're kind of going crazy. And right. so I just felt like I um, had much better clarity and, and the, the, the spin of the ball coming off the racket was way cleaner, way cleaner. So I didn't want to tell him what I was doing until we were done. And so. We sat down afterwards. Yeah. He said, what the hell today? And I said, well, you know, I just started thinking about the kind of loose grip. Yeah. And he goes, well, okay. <laughs> and of course, he's got the sleeves all cut off and he's just, he's ripping out of his shirt. And he's going, I'm going in the gym. I'm going to do this. Right. All right. I, don't, I don't think that'll make a less, you know, tension grip on it. Right. <laughs> let, me get back, let me get back to pillar number two, which is always been tactics and strategy. And uh, I, I don't know if I mentioned this uh, in yesterday's episode, but I was watching last week during the grass courts. I was, I was watching uh, the Jimmy Parker and Fred Drilling semifinal uh, match. And there was a guy sitting next to me. And I said, I said, you know, very not, not sort of flippantly, but I just said, well, and, and Fred Drilling, by the way, is one of the top players in the world in his age group having won copious amounts of gold balls he's won several world titles he's been right. ranked one in the world before this is not some guy who's just hey i think i'm gonna go out and try to play a little tennis today i mean this guy's the real right. deal right but it was clear it was clear that 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 and i asked the guy i said so what do you think jimmy parker knows that fred drilling doesn't know and just, I meant it in general, just about tennis in general. And I'm, I'm wrapping this. I'm really sort of, I know I've been going on here, but, but, and you're just chomping at the bit. Probably not. You're probably just sitting back there going, I don't even know. What this is the best before. entertainment. I I'm mean, waiting, you know? <laughs> I mean, you know, I got to pay money to go see I, a movie, but this is. I, I think I am going to go add some vodka to my orange <laughs> juice here. So go okay. ahead. Keep going. So anyway, so anyway, I asked him, you know, what do you think Jimmy Parker knows? That, 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 and I didn't really mean Fred drilling. I meant that all the other guys in, in, in the country right. in his age group just don't know. And the guy said, well, gosh, maybe uh, that looks pretty fit. He looks, he looks in great shape. And I said, well, Fred's, Fred's in great shape. Fred's super fit. I said, fitness is just a commodity. 
that's a super controllable. Anyone can do that. And if you're not doing that, then, you know, you're not going to be competing for a ball. Um, I said, what else? He said, well, his, uh, his strokes look pretty clean and efficient. And I said, well, look at Fred drilling. There's, there's no waste of anything there. I said, I said, I said, that's kind of a commodity too. Anyone could, uh, that's kind of a controllable. And he said, well, let's see. And he really couldn't come up with it. He says, well, print it. okay, just give me the answer. And I said, I said, to me, Jimmy knows where to be. Um, I mean, in, in, in that every shot he hits, he knows where to move to next on the court better than anybody else. And the guy kind of looked at me like with, you know, like, like the, like, you know, the RCA dog. Huh? What? Huh? Yeah. And, and I just said, look, you know, no one's out there just ripping the ball around. Even Mark Vines in, in the 60s is, I mean, he's hitting a bigger, cleaner ball because he's 15 years younger. But it's relative because his opponents are 15 years younger too and they're quicker. Right. But he's not out there just crushing the ball. He's not out there blasting aces right and left. I said, but those two guys understand the geometry of the court better than the other guys that when they play their shot, there's a thought in mind of, I'm going to move here next. I'm going to move somewhere else next because I want to enhance the quality of my shot by presenting my opponent with a different core position, you know, a, a, a tougher core position. <clears throat> right. And, and there were times where in this match I was watching with, 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 with Parker and drilling, where all of a sudden Fred would work this thing. He worked the point, worked the point, and Jimmy was sort of scrambling around. And then Fred would have this big opportunity. And he'd go for it. And for some magical reason, Jimmy was just, oh, just kind of standing right there where, and, and now right. Fred's got, and now Fred's hit this big thumper and the lower 40 on his side is, and he's going, oh, crap. Jimmy's, <laughs> Jimmy's where I'm hitting the ball and I'm not where he's about to hit the next yeah. shot. So I think that's kind of the, that's something that you only get from experiences, plural. It's really tough to, it's really tough to teach, you know, what is, you know, a winning, uh, you know, a winning formula is shot choice plus where do you move to next? Right. And I mean, you can, I think you can, you can, you can sort of look at, at someone's video and go, Hey man, next time we hit the ball there, look, you could, can you see why you should move over here? And they go, yeah, yeah, I can see that. And so I, I think though that it, unless you, unless you think of shot choice in that, in that strategic tactical way, I mean, tactics to me are what are, are simply where do you move to next on the court? Because that really can then make the next shot choice like right. the biggest no brainer in the history of the game. So you want me to shut up right now? Shall I just stop? I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just going on go? the ride here. You know, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just being your wingman right now. Just like, just... <laughs> uh, so anyway, that's kind of what I'm, I'm thinking more in terms of pillar number two, the tactics and strategies are really much more about court position. So you present your opponent with a shot and then where do you move to next to, make his choices not so obvious. So maybe right. they kind of go through a little, a little shot choice list. Um, and lots of times I think what happens is you, you can create a lot of, you know, sort of semi forced errors because you've, you've played a ball and now you're in this, in this core position where you're telling them, you know, I, 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 sure, man, I'll, I'll give you a foot over here and I'll give you a foot over here. Um, right. But other than that, if you don't hit it, you know I'm in a pretty good spot on the court. So good luck. Yeah. Good, good luck, luck with that. that. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of players kind of lose their way, I think, because they and, – and I'm, and I'm saying this because I've watched a lot of tennis. I've watched a lot of senior tennis. And the guys that struggle – you know, those guys who struggle in the first and second round, the guys who are trying to help, um, they, they tend to kind of assume that their opponent can 
hit the ball anywhere, anytime to any target. And so they're always kind of like trying to hedge their bet against all possibilities. And when you do that, you become kind of a non, you become non-existent across the net to your opponent. I know when a guy is playing kind of overly neutral or he's not committed to his move and that, and, I, and I've got the passing shot on my strings and I can, and I can feel that there's nobody there. That there's no one challenging me on this because he's playing so deep in the court. He's trying to hedge his bet so much. And so it just allows me to just not go for too much and just like, let me just hit the ball. And I really don't care if he gets it or not, because that was his, had he made his final move, I'm going to feel more pressure than to be a little bit more accurate, maybe to try to put a little bit more sting on it. And that's what's going to cause me to create an error possibly, you know? And so I think this idea that, um, and I've seen this through all levels of play too, three oh three five, you know, four oh four five and on up. Um, where players kind of assume that the player they're playing against has all the shots. And nothing could be farther from the truth at every level of the game. And it's all relative to the level that you're playing. It doesn't matter if you're a five oh, five oh plus. All it means is that as you get higher in the in the ratings, the margins become tighter. But still, there's things to pick at. There are, there are you know, weaknesses to exploit. And it's just a matter, you've got to be much more disciplined about, about your tactics to exploit those at the higher levels of the game. The lower levels of the game, uh, you know, you, the reality of having to cover the whole court is just is so far off the reservation that, you know, the reality of what your opponent is capable of producing and it's just always, it's always curious to me when somebody miss hits a ball, you know, and this is normally at the, at the three, five, sometimes at the four, but definitely at the, at the, you know, three, five level and lower where somebody just shanked the ball completely and, you know, good shot. You know what I mean? The, the response is they're so disconnected from the actual knowing what a clean ball sounds like and knowing that the ball was, you know, kind of shanked and that's how the it was won and oh you know hey bob don't let him go down your line again don't let him you know it's like you know hey ralph the guy shanked the ball <laughs> I mean, ralph know. he was trying to go cross court wide right. and he got a hair laid right oopsie doops right and you know what at the higher levels of the game it's still it's still evident and you can find those things not to worry about that, that even though they make a ball, you know, I mean, I've played matches where um, I go, listen, partner, um, that guy playing the ad side is the weak link. And so even if it's not like good doubles geometry to play it to him in this situation, I'm going to play it to him anyway, because I know his volleys are not quite as good. I know he's not secure with that. So I'm going there because he's going to give me something great to work with. So in understanding that, that your opponent has weaknesses and looking at it, I think it, it, it creates this, this false impression that, that players have that, that, as you said, yeah. you know, Jimmy Parker knows where to go stand. Yeah. yeah. And he understands his opponent. And so he, he, he plays that percentage over and over and over again. And, and then, like you said, all of a sudden, Fred Drilling's got this ball. Looks like he's going to do it. He hits the ball. He looks up. Oh, crap. Jimmy's standing there. Oh, crap. I'm over on the edge of the court. Oh, crap. Jimmy just pokes it into the open court. You know, well in the margins. Nothing near a line. There's no chance of it being called out. Right. It's over. Right. So anyway, that's that's how I think, you know, uh, where where there's that blind spot for a lot of players. Um, well, I, I think I think the other thing that you've mentioned a lot is I can't remember what your term is exactly your phrase that you call it. But it's so many players are thinking that that the shot that they're hitting is the thing it is is like it's like one and done or it's like it's a right. hit. It's a hit. Watch and then react. Yeah, yeah it's, and, it's, a, it's a detachment. It's a detachment from hitting that one shot. Let's see what happens, and then I'll make another decision on the next one as to where to go and then what to do. And that, that is you are just constantly behind the eight ball playing that way. You're never ahead of what's going on. 
you're never putting that final layer of pressure on your opponent by choosing a place to be in the stand. Um, so yeah, the one and done is, is just the total detachment ball to ball. You know, the big, I, I remember last year, first year seventies last year in 2018, and I've, I've talked about this a little bit before, Look, there is, there is a reality that as we get older, um, we just, you know, we start losing a step. And, and one thing I noticed last year, like in the first tournament, you know, this is almost two years ago, right? It was, it was January, 2018. I'm playing my first tournament in the seventies and I'm playing one of the all time great players in my age group. And uh, he's actually sort of the end of that age group. And uh, he hits a great shot to the corner. And I just go scrambling over there. I'm just, uh, you know, just, just, everything I get just to get there. And I'm thinking, Oh boy, what am I going to do with this thing? Cause whatever, you know, I mean, I know he'll be coming in and I get over there and I just try to, I put a racket on it. And I kind of get lucky. It sort of floats back and I look back and I go, where is he? He's still back on the baseline. And I'm just thinking to myself, wow, maybe, <laughs> maybe there's something to this fitness thing that, you know, is enabling right. To sort of be, and and um, to kind of track down some balls that maybe the other guys and look, who's to say that he didn't hit the shot and normally, you know, a guy in that age group wouldn't even try for it. I don't know. I'm not giving myself props in terms of um, being being the quickest guy out there because I'm because I'm certainly not. But the point that I want to make is that what a relief it is, right? When you go over there and you scramble, whether it's age related or whether it's sort of ignorance related. And I don't, I don't mean ignorance in a critical way. I mean, just don't have the right information, but right. you hit a shot and you take your guy out there and your guy and, and you stand and watch. And the guy goes over there and, and floats it back and just goes, Oh, thank goodness. He doesn't know that when he does that shot to the corner, right. <laughs> Right. I mean, like the biggest, you know, your, yeah. your hat kind of knocks off because the confidence goes right to right the top of your did, head. Did you not see the neon sign above me that said, cheat the court, sneak attack, sneak <laughs> attack now. Yeah. And look, you don't have to totally plan it. I mean, look, how many times, Jeff, have you played? You've, you've intended to kind of go right up somewhere in the middle third of the court. And either you're a hair late or you're a hair early. And the next thing you know is, whoa. I did. I'm a genius. <laughs> I'm in. I'm coming in. And yeah. how many how many players do that and and don't even think about taking advantage of it? Right. Um, and it's something that that Jimmy Parker would never do, and 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 Mark Vines would never do. I mean, look, those guys are probably the masters of unintentional opportunities or unintended yeah. opportunities. And yeah, and, and, and yeah, and being aware, right. always having it on their radar that they're. They're open to that possibility after every ball they hit. Look, what, and, what, and, yeah. and, there, and there have been times, too, where, and, you, and you've done the same thing, is, is you've hit a ball to kind of the middle of that half over there. Maybe it's up the line, sort of up the line, but not really. And your opponent was guessing because what had happened in the last five games is you've been taking that forehand cross court on that particular ball. But this one – you decide, well, I'm just going up the middle of that half. And the guy is right. so wrong-footed and because he thinks, well, God, he's, he's going to cross court again. And it's just that one step. You look up and you go, I'm in. I'm in. Because even yeah. if he gets to this ball, it's going to be a flailing. So yeah. I, I just think that – I guess the point I want to get across today is that guys and gals out there, you got to start thinking way more about the, the benefits of court positioning and that the best players that's where they really excel. Look, right. the stroke techniques a commodity. I'm sorry. Right? Fitness is a commodity. Mental, you can work through that, right? Some guys have it, some gals have it, some guys and gals don't, but you can kind of right do the lobotomy now and then and get a little better at it. Um, right. But the two things in terms of experiences and 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 court positioning i think really go hand in hand yeah and and uh and so anyway that's the point i wanted to make today jeff <laughs> <laughs> okay 
Okay. okay. <laughs> All right, good, good. Guys, one thing we haven't mentioned because I've been on a yak attack, and I only had one cup of coffee this morning, so it's not that. Um, it is a beautiful day here in the desert. It's a winter day, totally clear, 66 degrees right now. And, and, and by the way, you know the view out of the dining room window here where you're looking at Mount San Jacinto. Yeah. It's, you know, 10,000. The peak's 10,008 or something like that. My oldest, Georgie, and her boyfriend, Tanner, climbed to the top of that thing yesterday. They got very – did I mention this to you yesterday? You mentioned it. Yeah. Oh, I did. Okay, okay. Well, so yeah. last night, last night, I, you know, they, they, they said, look – we're gonna to go to the peak, and then we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna hike back down to the top of the tram. There's a you know beautiful tram that goes from the valley right. up there, and um, so I got over the so so she texted me and said, um, you know, we're just about down the tram. So I, I went over there, and they had shut down the tram because of the 85 mile per hour winds up on top. And I, you know, and they, and, and they got, it's a long road to get up to the, you know, the base of the right. tram and they, there's a barricade there. And the guy says, yeah, Hey, you know, you know, we're shut down. I said, well, look, I, you know, I'm, I'm picking up a couple of hikers who were coming down in the tram and they go, and he goes, okay, well you can, you go, you go parking lot a because, but it's going to take a while because they're coming down like on a crawl. They're just inching their way. Right. Down. So sure enough, I get there and I'm, I'm in the parking lot for a, solid hour and a half waiting and she's texting me she says yeah we're finally on the tram um and they take the tram down and the parking lot there's you know how they have in national parks the big metal bear resistant trash cans where right. these things you can't knock this over right i mean they're just like i don't know anvils <laughs> like you know this thing's knocked on its side so you know Anyway, and, and people are coming off the, you know, earlier trams coming down and walking through the parking lot. And I swear, I mean, there's debris flying just you know, horizontally. And people are just holding on to each other, getting to their cars. Anyway, Georgie comes down finally and she gets off and she says, well, that was this. And she's climbed the big walls. And you're yeah, that, that, that girl can climb. This girl, this girl can do it. And she said, Dad, coming down was the scariest thing I've ever done. I said. I said, well, I, I said, because the wind, they said, no, what they did is they packed it with as many people as they could to try to make it heavier so that it wouldn't be, you know, swaying back and forth. And then the, the, and then the cable car going or the tram going up, you know, there's one down, one going up, right? They have a couple of workers inside the one going up that they have loaded down with these big drums of water. So that it's got weight, so that when they, you know, when they right. pass each other, it's not banging like this. Anyway, she said it was the hairiest thing she's ever done. You know, I mean, hairier than hanging off a three thousand foot, you know, water, right? I guess. Okay. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I don't know how I got it on that. I was just looking at Mount San Jacinto right now. <laughs> um, guys, listen, if you want to get on a coaching call with us, the three of us, you, me, and Jeff, we get in the phone. It's a private call. It's free. And uh, all we ask is you bring that one thing in your game right now. Maybe think about one of the five pillars that we've yacked about today. And if there's one area that you really want to kind of pick apart, and let's see if Jeff and I can help you. Give you a little plan to kind of put you in the path to start getting the result you want with your singles and or doubles. So way to get in that call, go over to goldballhunting.com. Drop in the first name and email address. Click the button. And uh, you'll get access then to our online calendar scheduler where you not us, you get to cherry pick a date and time that works best for you. All right, big boy, what do we want the, what do we want the fine folks to do right now? I think everybody wants to take a nap right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> or, like it. Or, I'd like to climb the San Jacinto and just jump. God, that was brutal, Brent. <laughs> Open up the tram and just <laughs> swan dive. Oh, God, yeah. Sorry, Talk guys. me off the ledge, please. <laughs> like us, share us. Please subscribe. Please yeah. subscribe, even though you listen to Maybe this today was your first episode. Please subscribe anyway. Yeah, it doesn't get any better than this, by the way. <laughs> iTunes and Stitcher rate and review. 
Yes. Really, if this is your first episode, goldballhunting.com. Check us out. Spread the word. Really, it's worth it. <laughs> tell them Tell them you think it's a tennis instructional podcast. You're not sure, though. Yeah, we're not sure. Not today, anyway. <laughs> Guys, get out there. No, Sam was sent out. Get out there. Help someone else climb off the mountain. Uh, Jeff, let's do this again tomorrow. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs>